In 1720, Paul Daniel experienced a vision of Mary, showing him dressed in a hermit's garment, marked with a white heart, and the cross overflowing from the heart. In that vision, Mary asked Paul to form a congregation to keep alive the passion of her son. However, it was not yet made clear to him exactly what form this order would take or how he should go about its formation. For Paul, the passion of Jesus is the greatest work and sign of God's love, not as an event of the past, but as a present sign we need to contemplate and allow to permeate us. Paul's mourning for the passion of Jesus gave way to a deeper appreciation for the great love of Jesus shown in the wounds of his passion. For Paul, the memory of the passion was a door to prayer, a two-way conversation with Jesus. There we can discover the stirrings of hope. While I was walking in prayer, when I turned the corner to go home, it was at that moment I saw myself in spirit, vested in black from head to toe, with the white cross on my breast, and under the cross, the most holy name of Jesus in white letters. The Passionist sign today looks like this. It is a white heart with the cross overflowing from the heart. Inside are the words, the passion of Jesus Christ in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Jesu, the name of Jesus. Kai ro iota, the first three letters of the word Christ in Greek. Passio, the Latin word for passion. It is pronounced Jesu Cri Passio. There are also three nails to remind us of the wounds of Christ. Wounds of the hands, wounds of the feet, wound in the side. In the beginning, it's been a, a bit of a journey with the sign, because as I came to uh, Christ the King Passionist Retreat Center, you know, you you recognize what the the logos are or what the taglines are, or you know, kind of experience certain things that go with marketing and everything. But as the past couple of years that I've been um, here with uh, with everyone, it's it's really been more than that. It's been that journey of recognizing the sufferings, recognizing the abundant love, recognizing that really what it means uh, when we look at, or at least when I see the sign, it's a, a sense of hope and also a universal understanding of suffering and love. Uh, the sign was always a part of uh our parish life and parish life back in the 50s was was the center of our life. Uh, but it's been a lifetime of, of learning and growing to uh, appreciate that. Uh, First time I saw a Passionist sign, I was a little kid and Passionist priests used to come to our parish, St. Morris and Livonia, and help out on the weekends. The visual I have is men in this long black kind of, you know, dour looking habit, walking very sprightly, you know, walking with purpose, coming into the parish, walking around the retreat center. And they're walking with this sign of suffering on their chest. And the image I have is they live with it. And um I'm a captain and I bring women on retreat from my parish 
And many of them come with horrible burdens to this retreat center. The men and the, and the people with them, the other passionists, the lay passionists, are not afraid of their suffering. And when they leave on Sunday, the burden is greatly lifted, if not gone. My passion story starts in a 1978 high school retreat. And at the end of the retreat, you would receive a little passionist lapel pin. And we each received our pins and we all went back to high school and we put it on our blazers and wore it which showed it was a sign of community that we had all gone on retreat together. And I think we may have all tried to be a little nicer to each other for the rest of the year. And I, I think that that's pretty much all I thought about it, except that it was something we were handed out on retreat. And I, I don't even remember being told what the sign stood for on that first one, but I was 17, so who knows? Um, and then you jump ahead 30 years, 35 years, and you find yourself in Houston at having done formation with a group of people who are doing their first covenanting with the community of passionist partners, and you find yourself handing out their sign. And that, that was a real full come, you know, come full circle to me. So when I think about the sign, what stands out to me is that it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's, it's, it doesn't just show up magically on, on your lapel or on your habit. It's something that's given and it's something that's received. Um, it, it's a gift. I have a long history of trying to understand more deeply the significance of the passion is sign. Uh, and I first got to know the passion is sign in Edna, Texas, when these Passionist uh, parish uh, missionaries came to do parish missions and the different kinds of devotions that passionists did in those years. Sign became a lot more personal when I began to recognize that those symbols were, were symbols of suffering. And not just the symbols of suffering of, of Jesus crucified. Uh, they're, they're the symbols, uh, the signs of suffering that, that people have because of real life injustice. I think in my life, uh, when I look at the sign now, you know, I see a heart with a cross embedded in it and nails. At, at the bottom. And uh, what I think about is that slowly over my lifetime, I've experienced things that have driven that cross more deeply into my heart. And uh, when that happens, something very special goes on. Uh, I think, uh, you know, with, you know, losses in relationships and experiencing a lot of people in natural disasters, which was part of my job was to go out and attend to folks who were going through suffering in natural disasters like Katrina and uh, uh, the tornado in Henryville and other things like that. Uh, I experienced uh, emotions in myself that kind of grounded me in that image of the cross stuck into the heart. You know, every now and then, you know, uh, since Mary Rita died, my spouse, uh, in in September, uh, you know, I'll get, uh, I'll feel that image in myself. And that's probably the deepest the cross has ever been in my heart. And I've, I've realized when that happens, it strips away everything else. The cross strips away everything else in life. And everything else is unimportant except for God's love which surrounds me. Uh, and if that's a passion is calling to share that love, then that's what I want to do every day of my life. I attended a retreat here in Houston at Holy Name Retreat Center. And Father Joe Barbieri was the retreat director at the time. And I remember really well 
that he spent a lot of time talking about the passionist charism. He showed us the sign. He spoke to us about the belt. And what I remember the most is, is his message on, on the passion representing the, the love of Christ, the love that he showed the world. And it seen through the passion. And so I realized I mean, not that I did know, but it became a different kind of a, it was like an enlightenment that going forward, my own life would be the same way in following him with, with the passionist charism, you know, before me in, in that way that I would experience crucifixion too and suffering, but I would be able to bear it. So for me, the to hold the sign, to participate in the sign, is to participate in the struggle Paul had in getting the congregation founded. And it's Paul participating in the frustrations and the struggle of my life. And part of that is the participation of we, the Paul of Tarsus, we make up in Christ the sufferings. It's, it's this greater participation in the mystery of the suffering and death of Christ. I had the tremendous benefit of being in the, the passionist formation from the beginning of high school through about my junior year of college, including uh, a year of novitiate. About our senior year, they moved, you moved from the, the, uh, the lower grade part of the school over to the, uh, what they call the senior section. Uh, we all had individual rooms. We wore our cassocks every day with a little miniature sign on that. And all of a sudden it began to take on a little different meaning in my mind. Well, I think over, I mean, for me personally, over the last almost 20 years, the passion of sign has represented something that's very familiar. So whenever I come across it, wherever it is, it's like a coming home. The, the charism of the passion itself, it's, it's in, your, it's in your brokenness, it's in your disappointment, it's in your unmet expectations, it's in your frustrations. It's when you stop fighting the way you think it ought to be and you resign yourself and you're still enough to say, okay, God, what's up with all of this? I also kind of fixate on the nails and the reason I do is I, uh, I wonder sometimes what nails I'm driving in. When I look at social justice and other things going on in the world, uh, you know, and, and even people who are close to me in relationships and things like that, what, what am I doing? What part do I play in this? I, I'm not just an innocent standby person watching all this. You know, it, the, the sign totally involves me. Uh, there is no stepping back from it. There's only living through it. And when that happens, I am immensely aware of how much God loves me, what is really important in life, and what isn't. Um, to me, the sign is basically a sign that we are faced with so many kinds of injustices today that we kind of gloss over the reality of those injustices, racism, um, this, this drive to uh, become more powerful, uh, all of those for me are contained in this sign uh, because it is the heart of Jesus crucified. So I think when it comes down to the sign, the three nails, the heart, recognizing that the passion of Jesus Christ is really in all of us. That's what I've really recognized what it's about. That, you know, the sign, being the symbol that it is, isn't a, a dead symbol. It's a living symbol. It's mm -hmm. a hammock symbol. It's a, it's a bold force in a world that's seems to me to be torn to pieces and, and bereft of, of the experience of love for many people. So, 
So it's a powerful, powerful instrument. You know, if you talk about our passion as charism, you know, and what's what's our gift, uh, I think that's part of it is is helping people understand that that through the sufferings and and just the ordinary day to day stuff that we all have to deal with in our own ways, whether it's uh, physical, mental, you know, financial, whatever it might be, um, that you're not alone in this. And here are here are people who who get it and who are willing to stand beside you and accept you where you are um, and and welcome you into a family. The passion assigned has even taken on more meaning, just having this conversation for me. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>